face of our God. There's nothing that can stand against the praises of our God. We will defeat the enemy with the praises.
I'll sing your presence. Okay, you can get loud. Come on. Let's get loud all over this place. Come on. Man, the presence of God is here. He is showing up. He has been moving in this season. I don't care how dark it looks. God has been doing things. Testimonies have been taking place. Revival has been taking place in this house. Come on. God is moving. Man, he's active. Can I share a testimony real quick with you guys? Is it okay if I do that? So on Wednesday, we had one scheduled baptism here at prayer. And then five more people hopped in the tank right after them. God is moving. Come on. And then on top of that, on top of that, in the last service, two more people got baptized right there in that tank. And God's actually not done yet because three more people are getting baptized right now in this service. Come on, somebody. Make some noise for the Lord. Come on. So what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to invite those three. If those three, if you could make your way up on the stage right here and join me. And if you guys could get loud and give them a huge round of applause as they make their way up right now. Man, come on. So what I'm going to have them do is I'm just going to have them share their name. And then I want all of us as a family to pray over them before they get in the water. Amen. So let's go ahead and let's find out who's being baptized. We'll just pass this down. Just say your name. Uh, Robert. Come on, somebody. So we are going to pray over them right now. And, and I believe me, if you guys know me, you know that I love baptisms. Like baptisms is like my favorite thing. And I believe that God loves baptisms. Uh, it's just a next level thing. It's, it's going to the next level in your walk with the Lord. And I believe that is a tank with just water, but it's more than that because we live in the spiritual. And so I believe that when they go beneath the water and they come back out, something happens. I believe it. I know it. I've seen it take place. So I believe uh, this isn't just a normal day. This is something incredible that's going to happen in your lives right now. So without further ado, if everybody in this place, if you could just stretch your hands out right now, stretch your hands towards them. We're going to pray over them. We're going to just pray a blessing. So right now, Lord, I just thank you. First of all, God, that you are in this house. And we just pray over these individuals, your children that are going to be baptized this morning. I just pray, Holy Spirit, when they go beneath the surface of the water, that every weight, every burden, everything they've ever carried in their entire life, God, would just be left in the water. And when they come back out, 
that you would hit them with your spirit, Lord, and they would be filled with you. God, that they would be able to walk into their future with the power that could only come from you, Lord. So I just pray that the supernatural would take place in this moment. God, we thank you and we love you and everybody in God's house all at once said amen Amen and amen. All right, you guys can make your way down. Come on, somebody. Let's worship some more.
Tremble, Jesus. 
continue to lift up that name just say Jesus just speak it out say Jesus come on just call out the name of Jesus God you are magnified in this place we lift up your name right now we glorify the name of Jesus God we thank you that you are in this house we thank you that you are in this place God we speak to the darkness right now that there can be no darkness in the presence of you Lord right now we just lift up that name Jesus we thank you we praise you and we worship you come on somebody I want you guys to know this. There is no name like the name Jesus. Come on, church. Here's the thing about it, though. My name has no power. I hate to break it to you, but your name has no power. I will never, with my name, raise the dead. I will never, with my name, raise the sick, heal the sick. My name has no power. But there is a name 
And that name is Jesus. The name of Jesus, when it is spoken, I want you guys to think about this. Your greatest fear, the greatest fear that you've ever dealt with in your life, when it hears the name Jesus, it trembles and it falls to its knees. That's the power of the God that we serve. There is no name like the name of Jesus. I want to share this with you guys real quick. It's weird how when sometimes God speaks to us, it's in the most random places. Uh, but I, I know everybody sees the world and everything that's going on around us. And sometimes we're like, God, what's happening right now? And I remember I was brushing my teeth. This was a few, a few days ago. I was brushing my teeth. And I was, had all these things running through my head, running through my mind. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak this to me so clearly. He said, Jaden, the whole world will soon know that I am God. And I was just standing there. I'm like, I just felt the power hit me. And I'm just like, the whole world will soon know the power of our God. The ones who are against us will soon know the power that God's hold. When the name of Jesus is spoken, come on, somebody, you're going to be in the grocery store speaking the name of Jesus. You're going to be in your house speaking the name of Jesus. You're going to be around your family speaking the name of Jesus. And things are going to happen and things are going to take place. There's power in that name, in the name of Jesus. Let's just pray right now. God, I thank you. I thank you that your power is here. God, I thank you that your presence is in this place. And what I want to do is I want to pray just specifically over anyone in this room, God, that is maybe dealing with something. Because I know that at the name of Jesus, the enemy must flee. That at the name of Jesus, the enemy must bow. So I speak out that name right now. I speak the name of Jesus into this room. And even better than that, he's in the room right now. God, I thank you for your presence. God, I thank you that you show up. And God, I thank you that you've given us a power and that power comes from within, that we have literally your spirit on the inside of us and we speak that name Jesus. We speak life into this world. We speak life into our families. We speak life into everywhere we go. God, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for the name that is above all names. We thank you for the name Jesus and everybody in this house all at once said, amen, amen and amen. You guys can make your way uh, back to your seats right now. Amen. I actually wanted to take uh, the opportunity while I could right now to pray uh, for a few people uh, that are a part of this church. And, and by the way, if you're here, you're family. Um, if you didn't know that, welcome to the family. Uh, if you're here at Lifesong, you are a part of the family. And so uh, what I wanted to do right now, I want to pray for some of our family. Uh, there's been a few uh, uh, family members here that have lost loved ones recently within the last week. And so I just wanted to lift them up in prayer uh, together as a, as a body, if we could do that. So for Angelique and Eddie, uh, their son Samuel passed away earlier this week. And so I want to lift up their name. I want to lift up their family and pray for them. And then also Carolina, uh, her daughter Ruby tragically was lost a few nights ago. So uh, what I want to do is, is if we can right now, if we could just bow our heads and, and together as a family, I want to pray for them right now. So Lord... God, I thank you that you're in this place. And God, we're here as a family right now. And so right now, Lord, I just pray, God, for Angelique and Eddie. And Lord, I know little Samuel is having the time of his life right now. I believe it. He's in your presence. God, he is with you. He is in heaven. I believe it wholeheartedly. But God, I pray for the family that is still here. God, would you encourage them? God, would you be with them? Would you bring peace? I speak peace over that home. Everybody all over this room, we're all in agreement right now. We speak peace out right now for this family. God, we believe in God right now. We just lift up Carolina to you. God, I just pray, would you go to Carolina right now? I know we prayed for her earlier, but I even pray wherever she's at in this moment. I just pray, Holy Spirit, would you show up? Holy Spirit, would you give her peace that surpasses all understanding? Your word says this, that you are near to the brokenhearted. And so right now, I believe that you are near this family. Anybody that's even in this room right now that maybe was affected by either of these losses, the Lord is with you right now. The Lord is close to you. So I just pray we all in agreement as a family, God, we're here for each other, but we're going to continue to lift up these families in prayer because, God, we are one body and we belong to you and we are all family. So with that being said, we, God, thank you that you're going to encourage these individuals, this family, in the name of Jesus. And we all once more said... Amen. Thank you guys so much for praying that with us. Come on, yeah, we can give the Lord a round of applause. Man, God is good. God is moving. I've been saying it. 
come on, we're, this year I'm going to continue to say it until I'm blue in the face, but that this year, 2020, will not be remembered for a virus, but it will be remembered for a revival. We got to keep speaking it. We got to keep saying it. The year's not done yet. Revival actually has already been taking place, and God has been doing incredible things. I've seen it with my own eyes. And, and while we're talking about that, right here, actually, uh, in this part of the church, every morning from 7 a.m. till 8 a.m., we've been praying. Uh, it's been the 21 days of prayer. If you guys are free from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., please, I highly encourage you make it out here if you're free. God has been showing up every single morning, so much so that we had to change it from the 21 days of prayer to the 41 days of prayer because he's been showing up so much. Uh, yeah, so I feel like if it keeps going at that rate, it's going to become like the 61 days of prayer. It might become the 81 days of prayer, the 365 days of prayer. I don't know. We might keep it going. As long as God keeps showing up, we're going to keep praying, right? So uh, if you guys are free from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. every single morning, Monday through Friday, please come here. Also on Wednesday night, uh, right here at 6.30, we have service if you're free as well. God has been showing up. I don't know who's been there on Wednesday night, but it has been powerful. He has been showing up every single time. Like I said, we had five spontaneous baptisms. It was incredible, but uh, I need to stop talking so much because Pastor James is going to bring the word. Are you guys excited? Come on to hear the word. So without further ado... Could you guys make some noise? Can you get loud for your senior pastor, for Pastor James right now? Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, just I want to add to that, that even if you can't make it to the, the morning prayer, this is your time and all of our time to lean in and go a little deeper with God. So even if I know some of you are commuting and it doesn't work, that's fine. But just uh, you take your time. Uh, during these now 40 days of prayer and just find a place and, and let's hear from God over these next, let's see what God is going to do. I think he's going to do some great things. Um, I kind of have, I don't know about you, but I kind of have a morning ritual in the morning. Uh, it always involves coffee. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, and usually when I'm, you know, I push the button and I'm waiting, I'll open up my phone to the app, to kind of look at the weather channel maybe, just see what's going to happen, you know, for that day on the outside. Or maybe I'll flip on the news and see what I missed, you know, what kind of disaster happened while I was sleeping or whatnot, or any of the local news, everything that's going on the outside. And that's okay to kind of be aware, um, but what's even more important than that is to be aware of what's going on the inside. So there can be a lot of stuff happening on the outside, but what's happening on the inside of you is even of the, uh, it's the utmost importance and something that we want to definitely pay attention to. And so in Psalms uh, 42 and verse 5, the psalmist says this, he says, uh, put that up, Psalms 42 and verse 5, he says, why my soul are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed? What's going on within me? He's asking. And then he talks to himself. He says, I'm going to put my hope in God, for I'm going to praise him, my Savior and my God. And so it's kind of funny because yesterday, uh, Sharice was just kind of walking by uh, me, and she just kind of patted me on my chest as I was walking by. She says, James Bird, how's your soul today? You know? And... You know, when someone says that to you, you know, my wife just kind of caught me off guard for a second. I'm like, yeah, how is my soul today? Let me think about that, you know. We've got all this stuff going on, and you have thoughts and mind and stresses and worries and all that kind of stuff, and it can actually begin to affect your soul, so your soul can be down or, or whatever. And we got to make sure that we guard our souls, right? Because what's in us is so much more important than what's happening around us. Right. Matter of fact, that's what I want to talk to you about today for just a few minutes, because we're going to receive communion. I want to talk to you about that what's in you, there's my beautiful wife right there sneaking out. Hi, honey. She loves the attention, so. She does not like the attention. All right. Um, What's in you is greater than what's around you. Amen. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in our world right now. There's a lot of things that, that are going on, chaos, um, craziness, uh, uprisings, all these things, political things, 
It's a crazy time in our world right now. But inside, inside is more important. And we got to make sure that we have our inside right and our inside is functioning well. And I believe that it, 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 as believers, as believers, as Christians, something dramatic happens to us when we get saved. Amen. And I think sometimes we miss it. I, I think sometimes we don't realize the full effect of what happened to us at salvation and what is continuing to happen to us at salvation. And so let me read this uh, to you. In 1 John 4, in verse 4, the writer John writes this, and he says, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, who lives in you is greater than that Spirit who lives in the world. Isn't that something? That what is in you is greater. Greater than all the turmoil. Greater than all the chaos. And so, uh, I, I just think that we can talk about what's happening in the world and political things and all that, but you can even boil it down to your own life. Our, the, the, the things that are just happening in our little world, the relationships issues that we're having, maybe financial pressures or sicknesses or anything like that. Even in that case, we still believe that what is in us is greater than what's happening around us. We don't have to allow the circumstance of, of our life to affect what's going on the inside. You know, the enemy comes to discourage us. The enemy comes to get us to try to, you know, intimidate us, to back us in the corner so that we'll give up, so that we'll quit, so that we'll throw in the towel. But our job as believers is to resist him. The, you know, if you're feeling discouragement, don't accept that. Resist that discouragement. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. The devil is the one who brings discouragement into your life. And so resist him. Say, no, I'm not going to go there. No, I'm not going to slip into depression. I'm not going to allow my mind to go there. No, I'm going to keep my mind stayed on Christ, knowing that God is for me and and he's in me, and he's working some things out, and he has great plans for my life. And COVID-19 cannot stop the plans of God. COVID-19 cannot stop the promises of God. The scripture says, no weapon formed against you will prosper, right? It might, Jaden said this in prayer the other day. He says, the weapon may be formed, it may be coming against you, but it's, it's not going to prosper against you. You're going to have victory. You will have victory in your life. And so it's important as believers that we begin to declare some things over our life, that we declare, you know what? I am strong in the Lord. I am strong in his might. I will overcome. I will walk in victory. I will walk in peace in my life. And, and we have to declare it because everything in the kingdom of God is voice activated. You have to open up your mouth and say, if, if, if you want to become a believer, you've got to open up your mouth and say, Jesus, I accept you into my life. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my life. You have to open up your mouth and say something. Yes. Kingdom of God is voice activated. So I want you to write this down. I'm going to give you five things that you can write down and Maybe one of the five, God will speak to you. Maybe you can pick one and say, okay, this is really what he's speaking to me today. And this is the first one I want you to write down. That it, write this down. Christ in you is greater than the old you. Christ in you is greater than the old you. You can personalize it and say, Christ in me is greater than the old me. What, am I mean, what do I mean by the old me, the old ways? I'm talking about... The way you were, the way you used to live before Christ, before you became a Christian. Come on. You were wild. You were crazy. Yeah. And you did some things. You hurt some people. You said some things. You didn't care what happened. You had pride. You had lust. You had, I mean, you just throw it in there. You had addictions, all of that. But that's the old you. That, that. 
You know, sometimes life is, the Christian life feels like a a -a whack-a-mole. You know those little games you play where you whack one and it pops up over here. You know, you whack your anger and pride pops up and you got to whack that one down. And then jealousy, you you know, and you're, you're trying to get rid of that old you, right? Listen, as a Christian life, we need to know that Christ has done something in us. And Christ is living in us and we have been born again. We have a new identity. We have a new DNA in us. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this. It says, therefore, if anyone, anyone, look at somebody next to you and say, I think that might include you. Would you do that? Just look at them and say, that might include you. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. Come on, help me out. Say, the old is gone. Say, the old me is gone. I'm not that same person anymore. I'm not going to let the devil trick me like you used to. The devil used to like be able to pull my chain. He used to push my buttons and I'd respond a certain way. He used to trip me up with temptations, but that was the old me. I'm a new person. I'm not going to fall for that any longer again. Jesus has done something new in my life. Matter of fact, I love Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says, forget all of that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. God says, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. Yeah, the old is gone. I'm going to to forget about that. Now listen, your life is probably a little bit like mine. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But in my life, I hurt some people. I did some things that were bad. I said some things that were hurtful. I, 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 I did some things that, that I'm embarrassed about. But that was the old me. And see, the grace of God saved me. The grace of God forgave me of all that. Now, I don't deserve the grace of God. You don't deserve the grace of God. Listen, you've done some things too. Some of you are looking at me like, what? You just, yeah, no, you've done some things too. I can see you behind that mask. I, come on, I know who you are. You've been, that doesn't, listen, no, no. Honestly, we've all done some things, right? But that was the old us. And, and, and grace, none of us deserve grace. It's just a gift of God. That's why we can smile. That, that's why as Christians, we're happy because we know the deal that we got. We know that we don't deserve it. Come on, we don't deserve it. None of us deserve it. It doesn't matter your long list. Somebody else has a shorter list. It doesn't matter. We all have a list in our past. But it's been forgiven because Christ in us is greater than the old us. We're not that same person anymore. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus? Come on, are you you thankful that he delivered you from some things? Amen. Matter of fact, some of us came from dysfunctional families. How many of you came from dysfunctional families? Two hands up, two hands up, right? Somebody got their foot up, right? right? And, and there's generational curses that are passed down. There's, there's traits, there's traits of anger. There's traits of abuse. One generation uh, abuses, passes down. The next person, uh, uh, next generation abuses. It just, it's passed down. It, there's generational curses. There's generational curses of, of alcohol where some families, some, there's, they, they're just susceptible to it and, and they love it and, and it causes dysfunctions and it's just passed down and down and down. Drug, I mean, on and on and on. We can talk about that. But when you became a Christian, when you became a Christian, I don't know if you realize it or not, but you were born again. And that, that generational curse was broken off of your life. I believe there's generational curses of, of heart disease and cancer and it's down your family tree and all that. Listen, you don't have to agree with that. You can say, no, I have been born again. I've got a new 
family, a new, I'm part of a new family tree. And, and Christ, matter of fact, in Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14, it talks about how Christ broke the curse off of our life. The, the curse, the generational curses that have been passed down has been broken over our life because Christ became a curse for us by dying on the cross. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus? So don't use that as an excuse anymore. Don't just say, well, that's the way, that's just how we are. No, 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 you don't have to accept that anymore. Don't, don't go there. Don't believe that. That's a lie. You've been born again. Come on. Christ in you. Come on. It's greater than the old you. You believe that today? Yeah. Now, now, if you're here and you've never received Christ, I can help you out just real quick. Yeah. Real quick here. All you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I admit. You got to admit that you need a God in your life. You got to admit that your way is not working. And you got to say, okay, I've tried it my way. Now I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to follow you. I believe in you. I trust in you that you died for my sins, that you rose again. Come on, you can do that right now. And when you do that, you can be born again. And the old generational stuff in all your past can be forgiven. I'm talking about no more shame, no more guilt, no more condemnation. Come on, you can do that right now second thing I want you to write down is that the Holy Spirit in you is greater than any evil spirits around you. The Holy Spirit in you is greater than any evil spirits around you. You can personalize it and say, hey, the Holy Spirit in me, in me is greater than any other spirit around me. I was just talking to a family last week and they were telling me, they were asking me to pray because they felt like there was some demonic spirits, some evil spirits in their house or something like that going on. And we prayed. But let me just tell you something. If you're a believer, if you're a believer, hear me today. If you're a believer, you can speak to those spirits. You don't need me. You don't need anybody else. You, if you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit in you and you can say, get out of here we all, listen, it happens to all of us. All of us have voices. All of us have spirits that are trying to whisper things. You're no good. You're worthless. Quit. Give up. All of that. Even today, even right now while I'm speaking, I'm sure there's a spirit in here, an evil spirit that's trying to whisper to you and say, oh, don't believe that. That only works for the, the super spiritual people, and you're not spiritual. You always mess up. You've got to say, you know what? Shut up, enemy. I'm not going to listen to you because greater, greater is he that is in me, come on, than anything in this world. I'm not going to buy into that lie. There are, Satan has demonic spirits, principalities. You need to be aware of it. If you're a believer, you need to be aware of it because you're in a war whether you signed up for it or not. When you raise your hand and say, yes, I want Jesus into my life, you entered into a massive war. And you got you to stand strong and say, hey, listen, it's not a physical fight. We don't fight in the flesh, right? I feel like that spirit of Brad's coming over me last week where he was doing that boxing thing. This is a spiritual thing. And we fight the good fight of faith. We stand strong and say, you know what? I'm going to cast down all those lies. I'm going to cast down all those thoughts. I'm not going to believe that. I've been born again. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. He's living in me. Write this down, if you would. The light, the light in you is greater than the darkness around you. If you're a believer, the light in, you have a light in you that is greater than any darkness around you. Is it dark? Yes. Is there crazy things happening? Yes. But we're not intimidated by that. Why? Because we have a light in us. And, and, and the light in us pierces the darkness. Come on, the light of God always wins over darkness. Darkness never wins over the light of God. Let me read this to you. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. Would you just say this before I read it? Say, the light in me, the light in me 
is greater than any darkness around me. Now, come on. Say it like you mean it this time. Say it like you mean it. Come on. Say, the light in me is greater than any darkness around me. All right. Here, here you go. Thank you. Thank you. I got the kids working and everything. All right. For God who said, let there be light. Do you remember that in the very beginning? Genesis. The God that said, let there be light in the darkness. Look at this. He has made his light shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus. Verse 7. We now have this light. We now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. So we can sit here and say, you know what? There's something greater in me than anything around me. But it's not boasting because you know why? We know where that power comes from, right? We know where that light comes from. It comes from God. We are called to not complain about the darkness, but we're called to shine light. Come on. We're to shine light in the darkness. We're, we're, our light, the light in you, the light in me helps other people see the way. Oh, this is the way. This is how you can follow God. Yeah, look at you. Your life is like a light for other people, like a lamp that lights their path. You, the God in you, God put his spirit in you. Light. Give me a good amen right there. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. How many are thankful that God put his light in you? We don't have to walk around in darkness anymore. Amen. The peace in you, if you want to write that one down, the peace in you is greater than any chaos around you. I'm talking about this whole thing of what Jesus has done for us. If you're a believer, this is what happened. He's put his peace in you. And the peace in you is greater than anything that's happening around you. Again, is there chaos? Yes. There's chaos, right? Is there darkness? Yes. Is there confusion? Yes. But we have a peace in us that passes human understanding. Colossians 3.13 says, And let the peace that comes from Christ rule. Everybody say rule. Let it rule in your hearts. For as we are members of one body, we are called to live in peace. I'm going to read you one more. John 14, 27. It says, Jesus, he says, I'm leaving you with a gift. Look at this. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift. And it's peace. Peace in your mind, peace in your heart. And he says, the peace that I give to you, the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or don't be afraid. Some of you today, you need to take that verse. You need to highlight that verse. You need to screenshot it. You need to do something so that this week when the enemy comes and you're feeling a little afraid, a little trouble's coming your way, you can say, you know what? I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to worry about any trouble because God's given me a peace. It's a gift. We don't earn it. We don't work for it. We don't deserve it. It's just a gift from God. So in the midst of this, everything that's going on in our little world, in the big world that's around us, everything that we're involved in, our job, in our family, in our city, in our community, in our nation, it doesn't matter. We can have peace. The peace of God right in the middle of that. Last one I'm going to give you this morning before we take communion is the glory, the glory in you is greater than the trouble around you, the glory. The glory in you is greater than the trouble around you. What is, what is glory? We talk about the glory of God. What is that? The glory of God is the characteristics of God. It's everything good about God. The, the total summation of all of his goodness, of all of his power, that is the glory of God. Let, let me read this to you. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, For the Lord is a spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.17. There you go. For the Lord is a spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, look at this, there is what? Freedom. Freedom, all right? So all of us 
who've had that veil removed can see, and this is what I want you to pay attention to, we can see and we can reflect the glory of God. That's what we're called to do. God puts his goodness, every good thing from God, the characteristics of God, the love of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, the kindness of God, the goodness of God. He puts all of that in you, and then we're called to reflect his glory. So that when people look at you and they see that your life is being changed. You see that second part of that verse that says, and the Lord who is a spirit, and he makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. How many are thankful that God is changing you? That he's transforming you? You may not be all the way there. I'm definitely not all the way there. But God is changing us, transforming us into his image, his glory, the glory of God, the goodness of God is being put in us. And as we reflect it, it begins to transform. It transforms our attitudes. Come on, people used to say things to us and we'd fly off the handle. But now we can respond in kindness. In lo- right? We can, right? Come on, right? Right? I'm telling you, you can do it. You can do it. You know why you can do it? Because it's in you. The glory of God is in you. He's deposited his goodness in you. Now, if it wasn't for the the goodness of God and the glory of God being deposited in us, there wouldn't be a lot of good coming out of us. But we as believers today, we can reflect the goodness of God. We can give forgiveness to people who don't even deserve it. I mean, they're jerks. They're mean. But we can, we can give them forgiveness. We can love our enemies. Why? Because we have been loved by God, and then we reflect the glory of God, the goodness of God. And everywhere we go, we've got this light in us. We've got the Holy Spirit in us. We've got Christ in us, and it's changing us. And as it's changing us, it's just bouncing in, and it's coming through us, and we're just giving it to others. We're giving out joy. We're giving out peace. We're giving out love. We are spreading it all over. Amen? Come on, stand with me today. Ushers are coming up. We're going to receive communion today. Would you just say this real quick? Say, the glory in me is greater than the trouble around me. Say it one more time. Come on, say, the glory in me is greater than any trouble around me. All right, this is what I'm going to ask you to do today. You can come up and grab the cup. And if you want to come down to the front, that'd be great. If you feel more comfortable staying in your seat, you can circle back and do that. But would you come and get the, get the cup there? Amen. So thankful that we've been born again. So thankful that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We're not going to live in fear. We're not going to live in torment. Come on. We're not going to live with worry, anxiety. We're going to live in peace. Because we've been given a gift. Amen. The peace of God. As you're getting your communion, we all have a past. We all have wounds. Some of us have been through divorce. People, some of you guys have been through divorce, loss, health, misunderstandings. 
But that is no excuse to be on the sideline. That's right. No excuse. That's the old us. But because of Christ in us, we're greater. Christ in us is greater than the old us. Amen. As we get ready to take communion today, you should have, if you pick out, there's two cups that you should have grabbed there. The bottom cup has a bread in it. The bread represents the body of Christ. And we're going to, just before we receive communion, and, and everybody's welcome to receive communion today. I should have said that earlier. Because we're going to pray first. <laughs> we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to clean us all. Yes. Yes. Amen. Would you just say that? Say, Lord, clean me. Yes. Forgive me. Come on, just say, Lord, forgive me. Just say, Lord, I believe in you today. I put my faith, my hope, and my trust in you, Jesus. Now, as we take communion, communion is about remembering. Jesus said, every time you do this, remember. What are we remembering? Remembering what Jesus did on that cross. That he died for us, and then he went into the grave, And the Bible says that he rose again. And the Bible says that same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. Resurrection power. This is what we're remembering today. What happened 2,000 years ago, we're bringing it back today. We're saying it's still powerful. He's still changing lives. He's still healing people. He's still delivering people. Yes, it's been 2,000 years ago, but that same power is alive today in us. Amen? So let's do this. Let's take this bread together. We take it together. Thank you, Jesus. And now the cup. The cup represents the blood of Jesus. The blood is what forgives us. The blood is what transforms us. Thankful for the blood of Jesus. Would you take this cup with me? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Come on. Jesus. Would you just lift up your hands for just one a moment? Come on. And just tell them, thank you, Lord. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. And what?